Let me ask you something. What's the most you ever lost in a coin toss? All right, friends. Well, I'm going to pose that question from a little different angle. What is the largest force you've ever had to fight in Bannerlord? Maybe it was a battle late in your campaign. Maybe multiple armies were attacking you. Perhaps it was a last stand. Whatever it may be. Do you remember how large the largest battle was? Because I certainly do. However, in these episodes, this continuation of our 300 series, we're going to push the upper bounds on what army sizes are possible in Bannerlord. Now, in your standard Bannerlord battles, you're typically limited to 1,000 units on the field at the same time. And while these feel like big battles, they're not truly quite as epic as we'd love to see. Especially if you're fighting two or 3,000 forces, it seems strange that there's only four or 500 guys charging you. Well, fortunately, Bannerlord has an incredible modding community, and with the addition of this new mod, this battle size mod, we will be able to increase battle sizes so they truly feel titanic with as much as 2,000 men on the screen at the same time. This means that our hardened battle group of 300 Spartans will now have to fight upwards of 1,700 troops all on the battlefield at the same time in what should feel like truly epic battles. Now, not only are these battles going to be much larger, but we're also going to be increasing the difficulty here because instead of 750 men attacking our 250 Spartans, the battle sizes can range up to 1,700 men on the battlefield at the same time, meaning that in most of these battles we are effectively outnumbered 6 to 1 or worse. Friends, welcome back again to another episode of Tactical Enlightenment. This continues our 300 Challenge series, a series of videos designed to show what the possible limit is for a small group of seasoned warriors against very large forces in Bannerlord. Uh, we continue to roam the map, cause trouble, raid villages, and decimate enemy forces here with our veteran army. For people who don't know in this series, our force is about 300 men and we are looking for fights against significantly larger enemy forces. Uh, we are raiding villages in Volandian territory here, and I expect at some point there to be uh, enemy forces. There's all kinds of tracks, so it's a matter of time before enemy forces seek us out. And here's multiple forces. We have two separate Volandian armies. This will do beautifully. So it's going to be over 2100, over 2200 it looks like. Uh, and as the other battles, we're going to go ahead and drop some warriors here. We've had a few bit over 300 as we've sort of roamed the land. Um, I've been garrisoning a few castles just so that I have a force to, to restock our group with here. Uh, but we're going to reduce our force down to 300 here. Uh, that way we have officially a 300, 300 man army. Of course, we've got extremely potent troops. You can't win a battle like this with a bunch of mid-tier troops. And as you can see, we have an archer-heavy troop, uh, archer-heavy army group. So into battle we go here, 2,200 well, Volandians. This will be our probably our most difficult please. challenge yet. Um, as with all of these challenges, victory is not assured. I, I, want, I want to remind the, the viewer, the subscriber, uh, that these battles uh, are extremely difficult, even with our stacked army full of companions, uh, and that victory is just never a sure thing. Especially fighting Volandia on open ground uh, also makes for an extreme difficulty. Although this is interesting, this map, normally this map is up in Sturgeon territory, which where a lot of my campaign has been occurring, but it looks like they've duplicated it uh, down in this region here, closer to the Asurai Kingdom. So we're going to utilize this ridge wall here uh, and attempt to execute either a decline slope defense, peekaboo, uh, peekaboo ridge. Um, there, there are multiple different names for it, but effectively what we're going to try to do is use the cover of this ridge, hide behind it, bring the enemy over it, uh, and then hopefully massacre them with projectiles and concentrated attacks. Look at the size of the enemy force out there. It's daunting. 
Of course, again, with these new mods, uh, the enemy force is going to have way more troops on the battlefield than in Vanilla Bannerlord. So I think we will attack them briefly on the ridge. We, we will use this elevation. Look how many there are. We will use the elevation here briefly uh, before falling back over the ridge. I have the 5th and 4th Corps. The 5th is archers and the 4th is my new crossbow unit. I'll be talking about them a little bit in the episode because that's something I continue to refine. I have two infantry divisions, the 1st and the 6th. The 6th is skirmishers. Two cav divisions a horse archer division, and then the 8th Corps, which is my elite knights, my highest level companions, uh, a lot of which have 300 riding skill and very strong weapon skill. So we want to try to suppress this initial enemy attack here. I will be moving my crossbow unit, the 4th Corps, into a square and other divisions into a shield wall. Our idea here, basically, that's their king right there. It would be nice if we could kill the Vlandia king early in battle. We're going to allow the enemy to get close to us. We're going to play defensively and then open fire and try to cause a massive uh, artillery barrage combined with uh, with attacks here from our infantry and elite units. You see the crossbow units there in a nice square. Infantry divisions are squared up. We're trying to basically bear the brunt of this charge before we really counterpunch. Of course, with such a large army size, Valandia has just a heaps of horsemen here. It looks like three or 400 heavy horse charging right now. And of course, it since it's their initial wave, a lot of these are banner knights, vanguard. Uh, this is very tough cavalry. Just now see the first bolts of our enemy starting to come into our, our ranks here. So their infantry and archers are staying back a little ways while their archers pound us. We're gonna behead their friends here uh, and then we will move over the ridge shortly. I wanna do some major damage though to the, the enemy vanguard here before we pull back. Oh, I got beat in the face there by a banner knight. I've gotta watch my health of course in battles like this. Of course, if I get dropped, uh, the battle is effectively over. Still, he's got 330 polearm skill. He's very capable of dismounting and dismembering some banner knights on his own. And of course, in this whole challenge, these are not battles I can just sit back and, and command my army. All right, it's time to drag these guys over this ridge here. We're starting to take a lot of bolt fire. We're gonna bring these guys over this ridge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two cab lines as shield walls to basically screen our retreat here. These are going to act like a rear guard. I'm spreading my units out below this ridge here. And now as our units retreat, kind of under a hail of crossbow bolts, our job here is to basically push back their cav. And it looks like they're willing to let us go. That initial sally there, that initial initial salvo of damage probably probably knocked down their, their uh, armored knight force by about half. And I'm hoping that pays dividends in the battle to come. Now, 30-second uh, recap of the strategy we're about to enact here. Uh, we are going to try to basically prevent the enemy from coming over this ridge. If they come over the ridge, right now we're going to try to hold fire. If they come over this ridge, we will open fire and we will absolutely light them up with arrow fire. Right? You can see the arrows coming from the other direction. Uh, and our job basically is to prevent the enemy from coming over the top of that ridge without paying a toll. They're gonna pay a steep price. Just like all their dead horses here. We wanna make sure that they take a pounding as they come up. Now they continue to play sort of defensive. The AI has been uh, a lot more cagey, a lot more passive. A lot more uh, calculated. I would say it's better. Uh, it's more intelligent than, than AI but I've been used to playing now for a couple of years. Uh, I'm not running any mods that affect the AI as far as I know. I'm not running a random, uh, realistic battle mod. Uh, but the enemy, look how defensive they're playing. Even though they have a huge force. Uh, and I guess they're, they're hoping uh, an impatient or a poor tactician will attack them. Of course, their position is virtually unattackable with 
a thousand infantry and archers at range. There's no way we could close that without suffering massive casualties. Here they come, marching up in a huge phalanx. And of course they have elite troops. When you have an army of 2200 like they have, their entire first wave is gonna be virtually all tier five and tier six. So their cav is making a push. There's a balance here now in pushing this cav back because I want units to attack and I want to shoot arrows at them, but I don't want to waste a huge amount of ammunition, right? This is going to be a long battle. If we have any chance of winning, I need to sort of uh, perfectly balance attacking these guys and preventing them from de decimating our archers while minimizing how much ammunition we use. To that effect, you'll kind of see me on and off toggling the fire and hold fire buttons. Now our priority is to wipe out these knights behind our archers. These are the guys that are going to be spearing guys in the back, couch lancing guys, killing our archers. Uh, and of course it's paramount to our strategy that most of our, our ranged units survive, at least these initial waves. We've got something like 70 or 80 Batanium Fiend Champs. We've got other elite archers and we have companion members that are frankly, they're like upgraded Batanium Fiend Champs. Some of them have 300 weapon skill, some of them have 300 plus bow. Um, so, so we've got a very powerful ammunition attack occurring right now. And the death spam tells you all you need to know, right? That these knights are coming in and basically just being destroyed. Now towards the, the that's their king. Let's see if I can wipe this fucking guy out. I got a javelin for you, buddy. Ah, shit. One more right in the... Uh, right in the fucking back. Took out their king. All their fucking futile attempts to shoot me failed. Eat that, Valandia. That's got to be demoralizing to watch their king just get cut down and they can't do a damn thing about it. These fucks are waiting for more reinforcements. Oh shit, better back up. You can see how impossible it would be. Damn, I just lost like a quarter of my health. You can see how impossible it would be to, to go over that ridge. We would be absolutely decimated. Now, of course, what I'm planning on doing, besides beheading some guys here, is exactly what they're doing. Sitting on this side of the ridge, these units attacked us, and these armies, so to speak. And so we're gonna wait for them to pop their heads over the ridge, and then selectively, I, I'm tr gonna try not to do it to, to 10 cavalry, but we are gonna attack them with a very similar attack. They come over that, that ridge with 50 or 100 infantry, and they are gonna be destroyed. I've got a crossbow unit here, the fourth. Uh, I'll talk about them briefly since the enemy's waiting here. I, I used to run uh, equal archer divisions. I used to run two, two identical archer divisions, the fourth and the fifth. We're now running the fourth as a crossbow division and the fifth is an all archer division. Look how many there are, fuck you guys. This crossbow division is versatile. The other archers, of course, they can attack in combat, but these archers here can play many roles. They can be offensive. I can have them shoot. I can have them form up as a square and be a distractionary group. And we can put them in shield wall right ahead of shock troops and plow the road for us. They're very effective and they're very versatile. Right? The more weapons you have as a commander, the more tools, so to speak, uh, the more likely you are to be able to pull off tactics that help you win insane battles like this. The other feature I'll mention, of course, is our infantry. You notice our infantry is right at the edge of the hill there. Oh, we need to open fire. Those archers are within range. Watch this fucking volley. Catch! That's 100 archers just obliterating everything in sight. Now, they're only sort of visible at the far end of the range down here, which is not great. It'd be nice if their whole force came over. We're going to expend a few rounds of ammunition, though, and try to push these guys back. We don't need them shooting at our troops while we're on hold fire, right? That's the balance I was talking about. See, their crossbowmen are actually shooting and killing our troops, so I can't just sit here and wait for them to come over the ridge. When they poke part of their force over this ridge, I'm forced to attack. Now I have crossbowmen on the right down here, and what I could do is eventually I could form them into either a square or a shield wall, and the other archers could continue to shoot. So long after these crossbow in a normal sort of battle, a normal traditional way of using them, 
where their value would be somewhat expended, these guys have multiple uh, purposes, multiple different values. Of course, in a square, they're almost indestructible. It would take a large force pounding on them for a while for them to do anything really to a 45-man square of big shields. And these Pavis shields that these, uh, that not all of them, but that a lot of these crossbowmen have, they have a huge coverage area for arrows, right? It's, it's just a massive barn door that prevents you from taking fire. So I wanted to mention the infantry. The, the reason the infantry is here is two reasons. First, I can form them as distractionary squares like that, right? When the enemy does make an attack, and we're going to wait until they do, we can have squares effectively distract them. Now, the enemy then has two choices with the square. They can either bypass it. Okay, we're going to open fire here again. These guys are surging over. I also want to charge in. Every time they come this close, I want cab units in the 8th Corps pushing them back. What I want is basically uh, them to be interrupted. I, I want their units to not be able to to shoot freely, right? I want to put a horse and a, a big spear in their face so that it's harder for them to set up. Getting back to it though, so that infantry square, that's my first infantry. If the enemy attacks it, of course, it's highly defendable. Meanwhile, the enemy's attacking something while they're being pounded with arrows and projectiles. If they don't attack it, what I will do as soon as the enemy is a little bit past it, is I will tell it to attack. I will have it drag towards me with the F1, F2 command. And we will have that unit effectively sandwich the enemy forces. So it's it's a little bit of a checkmate move. As soon as you make the move, uh, the enemy's kind of fucked. Each time you see me charge with my infantry to sort of push the enemy back, you will also see me retrieve those guys, almost like they're on a yo-yo. I want to make sure these troops don't go over the ridge. If my troops go too far over that ridge, this battle is over. We will face withering fire just like we're giving to the enemy right now. In fact, that's what it'll look like from the other side. My troops will go over, get obliterated, the screen will be all red instead of all green, and the battle will be over. So now the enemy is basically over the dotted line here, right? We charge, an aggressive all charge. We're gonna kite with the archers a little bit. We're pulling our archers back a bit. And we send in infantry and cap units that are sort of holding the line here. God, it's a lot of troops. They're just fucking thick. I hear them being pounded with arrows. What that means is that these archers are gonna have a hell of a time trying to set up. But, of course, their infantry is swinging axes at us. This is a lot of guys to deal with at once. In go the 5th, 6th, or 6th, 8th, and 1st and Division. And we're going to support them here at the periphery. Now I'm moving up the crossbow and shield wall. We're basically going to try to hold this gigantic force back. I can't fight this whole force at once. So we're going to try to concentrate them into a small area. They've got crossbowmen uphill from us, so we're gonna move downhill here, get out of range of their bolts. It looked like they immediately reacted to that though and started pulling their troops back. These guys here on this lower part, these guys are vulnerable, so I'm gonna pull the sixth corps with me. This is an infantry division of skirmishers, and we're gonna attack them directly. We're not at any risk here, or very low risk of being hit with bolts, so we're gonna charge in here. This is basically a melee on melee fight, right? These are the two vanguards clashing. I'm gonna join them on foot. My ax is incredibly lethal and fast, and I'm gonna try to, as usual, I'm gonna try to get behind the enemy. If I can get behind their lines, I can attack defenseless Attackers. Look at these guys. These guys are just massacred. Now we're right at the fringe of the line. I don't want to go much further towards the enemy than this. I want to kill that lord if I can. She's got like bodyguards around her. So I'm taking bolts from behind me. That means we're too far over already. It's time to drag my forces and reset them back to our side here. You can see the death 
The deaths that are occurring are mostly their archers shooting our guys at the top of the ridge. We'll reset our troops, bring our guys back down to this side. That was a pretty nasty exchange. We lost about half our forces there. You can see that one cab unit that was retreating. There's a 10,000 bolts shot at the guy. Now this is a problem. I've got banner knights in our midst. I don't have a horse and I've got banner knights running around. It's not good. Could do a little bit of juking, but these guys are also gonna be spearing and running over our troops. We might need to move units into a, into a square, I was gonna say. Well, this battle's over, right? Because the AI is gonna take over and blunder about. Uh, this was our first attempt. I, I've said this before during this series. I'm gonna try not to tell people uh, at what stage, how many times we've tried this, which brings up another point. We are going to try this series more than once. Just because we failed here, uh, you know, in a normal campaign, you would move on. But for this challenge, because this is such an incredibly difficult challenge, we're simply going to reload this game uh, and give this battle another another try. You can see my force has just no chance without me. So stay tuned again. We will have another go at this battle. Alright, we are back. Same situation as before. We're going to let this Valandian force attack us. We've got our 300 men here, um, but I'm going to make a few changes in this attempt. Uh, first, strategically, we're going to make a few changes. Uh, of course, normal player damage. Uh, but I'm also going to wield uh, a lightning fast axe for this battle. I have multiple different axes. Some of them are vestiges of, uh, of the original character I started up this campaign with. He was a high level smith. Uh, and Odin's Wrath. This axe here is super fast. It's very short. Uh, you got to be close to the enemy. Uh, but between but my longer, faster polearm and this lightning fast axe, uh, I think we have a better shot. Uh, the second thing I'm going to try to do in this attempt is tactically we're going to retreat a little bit earlier. I think I suffered too many losses uh, by waiting too long and sort of sparring it out against their, their heavy cav. Uh, I'm planning in this in this fight to retreat earlier. Uh, as before, of course, we're setting up our fourth crossbowman. If you're not doing this with with your divisions uh, now, of course, you're not going to want to do this unless you're you're operating seven eight uh, army groups. If you're just operating four or five, I would just have one or two archer corps. Uh, but with our eight archer corps, I want this specialized crossbow unit. And again, we will either form them up as a square or a shield wall uh, when they are threatened. Right? They'll go into turtle mode. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put those skirmishers right behind them. See that sixth? Those are skirmishers. My idea is that when I form up this crossbow unit into a square, any cav units that are attacking it and kind of getting stuck and jumbled up on it, those javelin throwers will then be able to unleash javelins on static opponents and hopefully massacre many horsemen. As before, the fifth, uh, this is our main archer division, first and sixth. Uh, the, first, the sixth I've already mentioned, the first is purely heavy infantry. Second and third are cav divisions. Seventh is a few horse archers. And then, of course, the eighth is our elite elite Go. units. Oh, yeah, that's the other, the other tactically different thing we're planning on doing this battle. This battle, uh, I made a mistake the last battle. I'm going to tactically, I'm going to try to avoid being hit for 180 damage or whatever it was by a couch lance. That seems like a good strategy to avoid that. So this battle, we're going to try to avoid <laughs> being killed, uh, having most of our health taken away by a knight uh, running at full speed with a sharp stick. Maybe Sun Tzu forgot that in his, uh, in his, his war axioms. Page 87, don't get couch lanced to death. Bad for strategy. All right, so we've opened up fire here and we're just gonna kind of hold this quadrant. I've got these cav in front of me, my eighth core is here and it worked beautifully. The enemy sort of retreated away. They realized they were attacking a porcupine there and backed off. They lost a lot of momentum. Uh, the first battle, they just roared in at like full speed and of course they did a lot more damage. Now they're coming in, but they're coming in slower. So we attack. The eighth attacks, the skirmishers are going to be throwing javelins, and a cav division is charging here as well. Meanwhile, I moved our, you can see our crossbowmen in a nice square there. 
So their cab is attacking it, but they can't really penetrate it because those guys have their big pavi shields up. Now I can, again, I already see the enemy bolts coming in and we took a lot of damage uh, that, that last attempt because of all those bolts. So uh, this time I'm gonna have us pull over earlier. We're not gonna take as much long range damage this time before we pull over the hill. In fact, as soon as these cab get off us here, now we're gonna go. You gotta do it quickly. I'm moving my units over, almost the same configuration I set up every time. First sixth in the center here, archers in the rear, and then cav on both flanks. Now what I also wanna do, okay, they're not pursuing. I was gonna bring cav up as cav shields to act as a rear guard. We don't really need it. I can have them stay by there though. They're just there in a shield wall. The one advantage they do, they do deliver here is they absorb a lot of bolts, a lot of crossbow bolts that would normally be getting you know, hitting our troops in the back. Over the ridge we go, and we get our cab out as well. So if you watch the whole first battle, uh, the strategy is going to be very similar at this stage. We're going to patiently wait for the enemy to get, come get killed. Again, they, we have the initiative in this battle, so to speak, uh, from the, the initiative as in they attacked us. That means on the battlefield, they're required to attack us. They can't just sit on the other side. Uh, at some point or other, they will have to come play our game here. As before, I've got skirmishers put behind our main infantry line. What I'm hoping is that that infantry line can stack up the enemy as they come over this ridge, and then they can throw javelins aplenty, uh, mix that in with some arrow volleys, to kill this noble. I always kill nobles if I have a chance. It seems to demoralize the enemy. I think there's there's some actual uh, uh, realism, but also game mechanics that work like that. So we drop nobles whenever we can. And again, just like the last battle, I don't want to exchange 150 arrows for two knights. If there's 20 or 30, we'll open fire because we can't just have these guys spear in our archers. But I really don't want to use 300 arrows for 10 knights. Like this is very borderline right here. Here they come, the main tranche is already moving up. Infantry division is holding nicely there. I'm holding fire still, we're being patient. Now that they've committed, we can open fire. And my job again, just as before, is to clean up the rear. Make sure we don't have uh, a bunch of banner knights back there ripping our archers apart. Whenever the coast looks clear, I can be like a, like a, a soccer player and start to be more aggressive, right? When, our, when we have the ball, we can move up. Just holding the line here with Cav, right? I just want these guys slowing down the enemy assault. Yeah, see, we don't need to shoot arrows into that guy when I can just run him over. I see their flag coming up here on the lower end. It looks like kind of similar to that first battle. They're going to try to approach from the bottom here, from the from the right of our screen. To that effect, now they're in range, we'll open fire. The other thing I'm gonna probably start doing is moving shield walls down here, uh, especially when the crossbowmen have expelled their bolts. This is a quasi charge. Let's hold the line and, tr and uh, curve back here. We can kite with some of our units while cav charges. So two units of cav charge, and we're gonna pull back with our skirmishers. Of course, those skirmishers are still doing damage at range, right? Those guys are still throwing javelins. And now I'm gonna bring these guys back. Our infantry is starting to head over towards the other side of the ridge. It's paramount if you're gonna pull off this tactic that you pull those guys back. Now, if you're trying this for the first time, don't be daunted by how the timing seems very difficult. Uh, it is, in this battle, it's extremely difficult, but that's because we're, that's their king again. Kill that fuck. Drop that motherfucker before he spears somebody. Somebody took him out. In this battle, it is extremely difficult, but if you're fighting 500 with your 500, 
I think you should be able to execute this strategy and still be able to make mistakes and win. If you can provide that uh, nasty fire on an enemy coming over the ridge, I think you can defeat forces uh, pretty easily. All right, here they come again. They're coming kind of on the south here. It's a very different approach. It's interesting the AI is taking a different approach in, the, in this battle. We're going to fly in here and try to interrupt them. Uh, these spears. Of course, Valandi has tons of units with spears. Anytime I can, I'm going to fly in here and try to kill five or six guys. Again, though, look at the arrow waste. These guys are shooting 50 arrows into these weak horsemen. I'm not thrilled about that. I got to stay open fire, though, because look at the enemy attacking our south here, our right. I'm going to drag the 2nd and 8th Corps through here, and we're going to try to basically break up their formations with Cav. They're focused on shooting. Meanwhile, we can trample them, run through here, kill some guys. Well, i got to watch out for these Cav countercharging them. All right, it's time to start forming up shield walls here to the south. I can move my 1st, 6th, and 4th into wide shield walls down here, and they will absorb a lot of these arrows. And, of course, they'll be defending themselves. Hey, you stubborn fuck. Get off your horse, then. Our archers are still unleashing hill. We're going to move our crossbow unit into a square. Infantry are nearby to attack them. And we'll charge with cav divisions in the 8th Corps. I still don't want these archers engaging in combat, though. They're shooting. I want these guys shooting. I want to keep kiting with them. This south here, the right flank, is a problem. Let's see. I'm going to we'll shield wall the center. And I think let's get shield wall set up here in the south and make a concerted attack on them. We don't want to cross the ridge, but these guys that are visible here to the south, to my left right now, we need to attack those guys. We're shooting downhill. We should be able to do a decent exchange of, of arrows to their cross bolts, but we're going to have to attack that division eventually. I mean, I say division, it's just a, a horde of men. That's probably more troops right there than my whole force. I'm going to counter this cap charge. I've got the 8th following me. And we're going to try to slow these guys down. That was a pretty disinterested charge. The enemy seems a little bit unsure what to do in this battle. They do have a huge amount of crossbow here. And so I'm just going to continue to try to drag cab units through these guys. Just finally starting to take damage. I've done much better this battle of not getting a lot of damage early in the fight. Uh, I better not speak too soon before I get couch lanced again. Archers are still firing away, but we're going to run out. Fuck, my horse just died. We're going to run out of ammo eventually. All right, I need to have these guys charge forward and buy me some time because I need a horse. First, sixth, second, and eighth can charge. I'm going to drag the horse archers to me and steal somebody's horse. Where are they? Here we go. Get off your horse. All right, we need to get in here offensively. I can take the eighth core. Their crossbowmen are in front. We have archers now confronting them. And I'm going to bring in heavy, heavy cav and the eighth core on this archer core. It's imperative that we do major damage while they don't have protection. These guys here. We need to behead a few more. Kill this fucking flag bearer. No flags on our watch. I have a couple cab units countered their cab charge. We're staying in shield wall, and again, I want to stay on this side of the map. Meanwhile, I want to pursue these fucking crossbowmen. While well, these guys are vulnerable like this, I need to do as much damage as possible. Now we'll reset. You see my guys getting close to the edge. 
Sometimes I can't talk while I'm doing it. If you're wondering how I reset my troops so quickly and issue eight or nine orders in uh, a second or two, shit. That guy doing? Get the, get the fuck over here. That that member of one of my elite corps over there getting shot to death. I've played this game and set up very similar uh, formations so often that I don't even think. I don't even have to uh, like go through in my head like who goes where. I, the analogy I used in a, in a different episode is it's like typing my email. Like, let me ask you, do you have to look down at the keyboard or, or do you have to... Uh, uh, you know, look at your email before you type it. No, your fingers just work, right? You've typed it a hundred or a thousand times a day for your whole life. Uh, so me moving my troops around at this stage with how much I've played is it's almost becoming second nature. You know, I could I could do this without without thinking. For a long time, I couldn't narrate live like this, play an episode of extreme difficulty, and move my troops around. Uh, and I still make mistakes, but I've gotten a lot more fluid with it. Uh, so much to the point that w one of the one of the guys on, on, I think it was Reddit, was suggesting in one of my videos that that I must be using some kind of mod or cheat to move my troops. There's their lord. <laughs> you got obliterated. Where did my horse go? Fuck. I didn't see my horse get killed there, but it's gone. I need a horse. No, no, don't get back on your horse. What the fuck are you doing? What's this guy doing? Get off your horse. Okay, there we go. So this this crotchety guy, this this curmudgeon motherfucker was saying basically that for me to be moving my units around that quickly, I must be using some kind of a, a mod or a program that's doing it for me. Well, I'm not, folks. I've just played a lot. Uh, you know, and just like you, like how often, how quickly can you type your email? Or quick, right? Like once, you, once you've done this a thousand times, uh, it becomes very fluid. Uh, but I do consider this a compliment. Like if someone wants to... If someone says I'm doing something that they don't they don't think is even possible or, or too difficult to do, you know, I, I will take that as a compliment, even though it's it's meant to be I guess they're trying to troll me or whatever the fuck. Yeah, they're sitting right at the edge of the ridge here. So the AI continues to be caging, right? They they're basically trying to get us to engage them. Well, we've already tried that on their side of the line. We're not going. We're not coming over. You guys are gonna have to charge us. It's amazing that an army this large won't attack us. They must have 14, 1500 troops. Now, part of it's the AI is probably calculating if we go over that ridge. Bad things are gonna happen, right? Those are okay, those archers are within range. We got to get offensive with these guys. I don't have many arrows left. I'm gonna drag the eighth corps through here and attack with the infantry. And we're basically gonna try to fuck their infantry's charging. We're gonna have to counter this infantry charge. But I'm gonna have to keep an eye on the right here for their archers. I do much more damage on foot in a melee battle like this. So let's join them with that wicked fast axe. Let's put this thing to use. Now I want to get right behind the enemy. This is perfect. I can just run right behind the enemy here and just absolutely chop wood through this whole formation. The best part of this too is that the enemy, we're, we're on our side of the ridge. I can see the archers over there. They're crossbowmen and they're, we're not in range. They can't hit us. So we're just going to chop through their infantry as fast as we can here. And then as soon as we're to the edge of the ridge here, we're going to reset. I still don't see bolts coming in. Now we're going to start getting shot. Kill a few more guys here. I'm getting a little greedy. And I'm going to drag my units right back over this ridge. Hopefully we don't take too many losses on the way out. Yeah, look at the death span. Fuck. Well, that wasn't too bad. We suffered some losses. I'm not getting fucking couch lanced again, motherfuckers. Fuck. Kill these fucking guys. I got banner knights fucking charging in right now. How am I missing? The enemy has forces up there. Fuck. We're out of ammunition. We have to charge those those units up there. 
Most of them aren't shooting yet, but I can only imagine the crossbowmen are on the way. I need a shield. Let's get our units sent up there. Yeah, they have crossbow units. Motherfucker. Charge. I don't have a horse. We gotta get in there as fast as we can. Unfortunately, our units are out of ammunition here, so we have to charge this force head on. In we go. This is where that axe is going to pay dividends. It is an absolute hurricane of death. Yeah, see, even if they block you, you just swing again and they're toast. God, this is a lot of crossbowmen. I'm going to drag the sixth. Fuck, we're starting to get shot. And we're just going to dive in here. We've got no choice. I can lead with my shield. But we've got to get our units in here quickly. We also have to come over this ridge. Uh, fuck, they're breaking up. Let's see. All right, let's try to break the enemy center here. If we attack the center, <laughs> if we attack the center here, maybe we can drive a wedge between them, get them to reform, and cut off their line. I gotta watch my own health too. I've done well to this stage, but now I'm starting to get injured. Let's get pressure. On. Oh, fucking gift! There's just a horse here for me. All right, eighth core. I'm gonna have the eighth core behind me and drive units in as fast as we can here. This is just going to be a frantic attack. They've got this huge long line of crossbowmen here. Let's see how many of these guys we can disperse or cut down. Yeah, they're backpedaling too. We can't let these guys get to range. Eighth four behind me. Those guys are going to be trampling people behind me, and I can just mow through people here. God, they're getting distance on us. It's a problem. Let's get the sixth into shield wall. And keep on cutting our way through here hard for them to shoot me. I can trample them. I can interrupt them. Where's the 8th core? I've got three or four guys. This is going to be close. Look at how many. There's still fucking tons of the enemy. They're running around. I see their death spam. Nuh-uh. -uh. Not on our watch there, Catboy. I've seen a couple other ban enemy banner knights, so I gotta watch out and make sure I don't get speared here at the end. Yeah, the eighth core is behind me, trampling guys. Look at the death spam. They're setting up again. We gotta just keep on the pressure here. Keep on the pressure. These guys are charging. I think we've got this. One last run through here. They're either going to rout or be killed. Where's that fucking banner knight? Lop a few more heads off. Our units are pursuing. Here we go. You fucking imperial cataphract motherfucker. Catch this one. <laughs> Just jumped up and sliced his head open. These guys are routing. We've got it. <laughs> oh, it's very satisfying. Just the finishing touches now on this, this incredible comeback. So now at this stage, I can let, let the viewer know. So uh, I'm trying not to tell you. I want this guy to myself. Let's disable this fucking horse. Let's take this fucking proud banner beer down. We're going to take you down by foot, motherfucker. Let's drop his horse. All right, this, boy, this guy's mine. You guys stay back. Shoulder to shoulder. Fucking banner bearer. <laughs> Fuck you. Ah, the motherfucker. Try a chamber dead. block. You are dead. All right, so now I can tell the... You guys watching this. Th this was not our second try. I'm trying to keep you in suspense. That way you don't know whether or not we actually succeed. Uh, we lost the first one. We lost the second one, the third one, the fourth one. Uh, we lost another one of our, our companions here. Uh, this was, honestly, I lost track. This was about our eighth or maybe ninth attempt at this battle. Um, so the first battle, I felt like we had done enough damage that we had a chance to win this battle. Uh, the second battle was worse. The third battle, I adjusted tactics a little bit and had a little bit more success. Uh, and basically, I was kind of addicted to the challenge. So I just kept on trying this battle until we succeeded. 
Uh, so I'm not going to bother showing you the other, the other six or seven takes in between, uh, you know, the first, second, and m maybe I'll show just the first. Uh, but the point is, though, is that this did take more than one, one uh, go at it to be successful. But I, I think under the circumstances, look at this fucking sword. Legendary. Nice. Look at the fucking speed and damage on that bastard. We're going to give that to one of our companions. Uh, the point is, though, is that I, I'm very satisfied, uh, elated is a better word, to have to have passed that challenge successfully. Obviously, it took us eight or nine tries, uh, but 300 men against 2,200 Vlandians, uh, you know, this is an accomplishment that I think, I think, I'd say, I say I, we, our army can be proud of. Yeah, we lost this guy. Her father's been like one of my sidekicks for a while. That's a tough loss. So we will be back for more with our 300 series. Our group of guys remains unbowed, right? Like Leonidas, we're not taking a knee. We're gonna continue seeking out ferocious challenges. Um, I don't know, we probably can't extend the bar further, much further beyond what we just did. That was pretty insane. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you're enjoying this series, if you wanna see more or certain scenarios, you guys just let me know. I'm very receptive to suggestions. Um, I'm pretty active on the channel right now just because I can check it a lot at work. So let me know what you guys think. Please subscribe if you want to see more. And we will continue to soldier on with our stout band of 300 guys here. Uh, so thanks again for watching, friends. And I'll see you guys next time.